Okay, so the next group is going to be Clubes de Ciencia. Um, both, um, in general, we have both the Bolivia and the Colombia groups, but um, the people who are going to be talking are from the Bolivia group. tell you about the Science Club Latin American Initiative. So this initiative started in Mexico in 2014, and it was a success. So that was expanded to Colombia in 2015, and finally to Bolivia this, this year of 2016. MCB. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't think anyone here questions the importance of science, of science education, but why Latin America? So Latin America has roughly 600 million people, so that's like 10% of people in the world. However, it only publishes 4% of the world's scholarly articles. So it's very low scientific production outbreak if you compare especially with Europe, which is 30%, or the United States, 20%, the United States alone. So what is wrong here? So one thing that we do know is that education in Latin America is far from optimal. If you look at his rankings from this program for International Student Association Assessment, PISA, you can tell that Latin American students consistently rank last in this ranking. And I should also mention that actually 50% of Latin American countries don't even participate in this ranking, so we don't know. And I should also say, and you can see that if you visit our poster, that this is not a matter of money. If you look at Latin American countries, they invest as much of their GDP percent-wise as the United States or France or Finland, so like the top performers. So it's not a matter of money. We think it's really a matter of culture, of education. And so in particular, science in Latin America is taught in a way that is very recipe-based. So students are not instigated the process of scientific discovery, and they race with the idea that they either are not exposed to it or they believe that science is not for them. And so, so it seems that science education is at the core of this problem, and we believe, or we'd like to believe, that we can change that. So Martin, I'll tell you about our efforts on that front. Okay, so as Leah mentioned, um, to this end, to try to combat this problem, the SCLA was founded with the goal of promoting curiosity and passion uh, for scientific research and for STEM fields using courses that are project-based. And so what do these courses actually do? So they vary a little bit per country, but in general, we all teach courses in a variety of science, scientific and science-related topics in both Spanish and in English. So speaking Spanish is not a prerequisite uh, for being involved. And almost all courses have both theoretical and lab components. Because in addition to trying to bring in knowledge, we're also trying to give the opportunity to the students for hands-on experiences that are otherwise very difficult for them to come by. Um, and something that we started in Bolivia that now Colombia and Mexico are going to start adapting are uh, career development workshops or seminars or informal chats. Because as Leo mentioned, the concept that uh, they can have a career in science or they can have a career in research or even what kinds of careers they can go into with a science degree are concepts that these students aren't exposed to. And so our goal is simply to try to increase that exposure. So what kinds of courses do we actually offer? So this is not an exhaustive list of courses that have been offered in the past, and I'm not going to read through them, but I invite you to. And I hope that as you're skimming through, you can appreciate a couple of things. One, these aren't your typical Bio 101 or Calculus 2 cell courses. And two, that the breadth and variety of subjects that are represented here is very vast. And so how do the students actually feel about these project-based courses? So from Columbia's first edition, 94% of the students rated their club as excellent. 96% rated their instructors as excellent, and 98% would participate in a science club again. From Bolivia's first edition, we have a quote from the student, Natalia, who's pictured here admiring her PCR reaction. Um, and she said, and then I realized that I want more. More of what I tasted, more of those unique experiences, more dreams that turned real into reality, more science. Why? Because each one of us can change the world with a little bit more science. And Noemi from Mexico reflected on the experience saying this, 
I had the opportunity to meet incredible people with similar interests. I had fun and I learned incredible things. Without a doubt, Science Clubs exceeded my expectations in all aspects. And so, none of, so from, from these kinds of feedback, we think that the students are really appreciating and really taking something away from these courses. And from the quality of projects that they turn in at the end of a week, we feel like we're having a very positive impact. But none of this would actually be possible without the graduate students and the postdocs that take the time to design these courses, go to these countries, and teach. And so what kinds of benefits do we get in terms of our PhD training and our experience from participating in something like this? Well, some of us actually sit down and write the grants that fund these programs. And I'm told that if you want to be a PI, you're going to be doing a lot of that. So this is a good practice for a good practice forum. You also get to design a four-hour course in whatever you're most passionate about in science. That can be anything from entrepreneurship to the physics of music. Like, it's whatever you are most passionate about. And you get to design a course in that, but you don't do it alone. You do it with a really strong and growing network of both instructors and co-instructors from all over the world. And you get flexibility not just in what you're going to teach, but how you're going to teach it. What kinds of components are going to go into your course? What are your teaching goals? And what are your objectives? And what kind of project are you going to design to motivate your students and also to assess whether your goals and your objectives were actually met? You get to mentor about 20 students directly. So you're with these 20 students for eight hours a day for five days. Um, and the students are incredibly appreciative of that time and that effort. They really look up to the cohort of instructors and co-instructors. And from my personal experience, I can tell you that I still receive weekly emails from a lot of my students. And like with a lot of our science, you get a free trip out of it. So you get to go somewhere fun, potentially new, and talk about what you're most passionate about for an entire week. And I think that that's a pretty sweet deal. But how do the other instructors feel about it? So this is a picture of students from Alex's Nana Cockroach's class uh, in Mexico. And he reflected on the experience saying, there's a practical value in training kids that have different ideas, new ideas, that are not indoctrinated by the classic ideas, because they will be our collaborators. These kids will be the people I will be working with in two or three years. And Enrique, who taught the Science Entrepreneurship Initiative course in Bolivia this year, pictured here with his students, reflected saying, without a doubt, entrepreneurship is uh, the engine of progress, and it can be found in remarkable places. It was an honor and a great pleasure to meet so many Bolivian students that displayed a genuine passion for novel scientific and technological endeavors. It left me awestruck and hopeful for the future of science in Latin America. And so through this entire endeavor, it would not have been possible without the support of Harvard. So in terms of funding, in terms of lending us materials for the labs, in terms of guiding us in actual course design, how to actually have teaching goals and teaching objectives, um, we're incredibly grateful to a lot, of, um, a lot of parts of Harvard, including MCO, the David Rockefeller Center for Latin American Studies, HCSI, and the Life Sciences Outreach Program. And in fact, for one of our courses, we were housed in a building with Harvard's name on it. Um, but not just this, right? We've received a lot of words of encouragement. Uh, and just last week, for example, uh, Margaret Gill, who's the Dean for International Affairs, gave a seminar where she said, I'm shameless when I travel around the world and talk about science clubs, because this is the inspiration for our next generation of scientists. And so this is something that sounds interesting to you and you want to learn more about how to be involved. And being involved doesn't necessarily mean teaching courses. We're also looking for people to help us advertise, people uh, who are good at like graphic design and helping us actually make the pamphlets and uh, course catalogs and things like that, please come talk to us. Um, this is a picture of a subset of instructors from all three programs. I think you can recognize at least five MCO faces in this picture. So please come talk to us. Um, all three programs are planning to expand, to continue expanding, and to give you a taste of that expansion. When Mexico started in 2014, they started with courses in a single city with about 150 students. In their last edition, they offered 125 courses in six different cities to about 1,500 students. So the expansion rate is huge. Um, and we're not trying to just expand in our own programs, but also to try to motivate uh, other countries to start adopting these programs. Uh, the Bolivia team also has a poster here today. We're poster number five. Sorry to change that on the slide. You can also find us on Facebook, and there's also a program website. And that's it. Thanks, guys. Focused on training students to become 
academics or to become instructor themselves or to become teacher or like is there any focus in that sense or is it just really like discovery based and and trying to give a passion for science? Yeah. Um, I think it's definitely more discovery based. It's just trying to allow these kids the opportunities that they don't really have in their respective countries because of the style of teaching that's adopted in those countries. We're not trying to force them to become scientists or academics. We're simply trying to give them the exposure so they can make a more informed decision. Uh, Andrew? Do you take undergraduates who are interested in this effort? Oh, you mean undergraduates in these countries? No, no, no. So I teach oh, a okay. class that has someone at Columbia descent who I met for this term was all fired up. I don't see why not. Have them talk to us, and we'll try to get it to work. The more people, the better. To teach these classes, I assume you have to know Spanish, right? Not in all cases. So in Mexico, actually, you do not have to know Spanish, and I believe 50% of the instructors do not know any Spanish. But at least the first edition of the Bolivian science clubs, you didn't have to speak Spanish in Colombia. I believe likewise, but we will try to change that. I guess the idea is that as you go, there's, there's differences between all these three countries, so there is strength in the union, but at the same time, each country is different. So right now, we're trying to push all of them forward, because if you think about it, it's a huge waste of human potential that could be geared towards discovery that we're kind of losing right now, but I think we can try to help that change. Okay. So how do students in the host country, the country where you're teaching, how do they know about the program? Uh, so a little bit of everything. So we try to advertise a lot. We try to advertise through Facebook. Um, Latin America is very big on Facebook. So we try to advertise a lot on Facebook, word of mouth, newspapers, TV. Um, we do partner up with some universities that bring their own students as well with scholarships. Um, so that's, that's sort of how we try. Yeah, I'll just say that we were instructors, but we also co-instructors. Were, we were PhD and master students of the living descent, for example. And so we're trying to help not only the students, but also the instructors are going to the future. They will become instructors themselves. So we're trying to create, it's not just that we're coming from the outside and kind of help them and then you know come back every year. We want to create more science in the country that will stay there or will go back and forth. So we are not only instructors, but also co-instructors who are getting repeated by all sorts of advertisement and Upstairs to lunch, and then in an hour, we'll be back down here for more student talks.